What's going on, Mel's Block? This is your man, Jamel, coming to you today, man, with the continuation of the lesson we've been working on for the last couple uh, last couple days, going through Psalms 23. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, this Psalms has been such a blessing. It's it, it, it's rejuvenated me. It, it's given me so much to think about and so much to be thankful for in Christ that you know, oftentimes we find ourselves just going through life, kind of going through the motions, trying to figure things out for ourselves. But scripture has clearly made it clear to us that we have a good shepherd and and he wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. And this song here by David um, has just it's just been a blessing to me. I pray it's been a blessing to all those that have watched the previous two videos on on uh, 23 verse 1 and 23 verse 2 um, I have we have another video that's going to be coming out here soon on verse 3 and then today we're going to be finishing uh, with verse 4 5 and 6 so man listen without further ado let's just jump right into it and 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 talk about what what the scripture has to show us and so again we're in Psalms chapter 23 and we're going to be in verses 4 5 and 6 so let's start breaking this down in verse 4 it says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death what does that mean right the shepherd he, he, he's, he's taking his sheep right and he's walking them through through different places but wherever he goes with the sheep there's always there's always uh, uh, a threat that's present, whether it be noxious weeds, whether it be rough terrain that they have to traverse, whether it be predators that are on the land seeking to uh, devour the sheep. There's always a present threat. They're always walking through situations where death can occur at any time. And spiritually, as believers, we are constantly walking through the valley of the shadow of death as well. If we profess Christ, there's always death around us. Because guess what? We may be in the world, but we're not of the world. And so the enemy is constantly seeking to take us out. Threats are constantly present in the form of the world, this present world system that we're in. The flesh, the flesh which constantly craves immorality and, and, and sensuality and so on and so forth. And then there's the devil, the devil who's constantly tempting us to go against the word that the Lord has given us, right? And so we're constantly walking through rough terrain spiritually and in this shadow of death. And so we need to be aware. Uh, Paul and even Christ says often, be sober-minded, be alert, because we are in a world that wants to destroy us. And so as we go through this world, this, this valley of the shadow of death, I love what David says next here. He says, I will or I fear no evil for you are with me. We need to have that same mentality. No matter what our situation looks like, no matter what we're going through, I fear no evil for you are with me. No matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, no matter what the terrain may look like, do not put yourself or allow yourself to go into a place of fear because Christ is always with you. It reminds me of the story of the disciples going through the storm on the water and Jesus was sleeping right there on the boat but they started panicking and these were professional experienced fishermen so you know that storm must have been rough but they started panicking and they woke up Jesus and they said Lord Lord are you just gonna let us perish and he rebuked them for the lack of faith you know you might not feel it you might not see Jesus there with you but David said I fear no evil for you are with me Christ is always with you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what that storm looks like, no matter how hard that terrain is, press on, fear no evil, continue to move in faith, knowing that God is with you wherever you are and in whatever you're going through. And then as we continue on, he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. To me, this is an amazing word. The rod 
is a tool of authority, right? With the rod, he comforts the sheep because he uses the rod to drive away the enemy, to drive away the predators that are seeking to destroy and to devour the sheep. The shepherd stands with his staff, with his rod, in a position of authority, and Christ does the same thing with us. He uses the rod to push back the enemy from overwhelming us completely. He uses the rod to protect us, comfort us, and keep us safe. But there's another element of the rod, and this element is, is one that most people don't like. But let me tell you something. God says he does it to his sons. He uses the rod to discipline disobedient sheep that like to wander off. So what the shepherd would do back in the day is sometimes he'd have to break the legs of the sheep carry them over his shoulder for a period of time for the leg to heal so that the sheep would become obedient to the voice of the shepherd. And sometimes God has to discipline us because we like to wander off. Sometimes we like to go and do the things that we like to do, but they don't always line up with what he says in his word. And so God, who is a good, good father, has to discipline us in order to get us to understand that, hey, where you're going, you're going to get hurt. Where you're going, the only thing that's waiting for you off that cliff is pain. You don't want to go that way. And sometimes we don't listen, so he has to discipline us because he's a good father. Don't begrudge the discipline. Don't murmur when God disciplines you because he says he disciplines his sons. He disciplines those that are his own. So welcome the discipline. Learn the lesson so you do not have to repeat it. So as we continue, he says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And that's one of my favorite verses because I've experienced that so often. In the presence of our enemy, God prepares a table for us. He says, even when you have the predators around you looking to attack you, looking to devour you, he says, you don't have to worry about that. I prepare a table for you. I prepare a feast for you in the presence of my enemy. That means that... When the world is looking to attack me, when the devil, when the enemy, Satan is looking, my adversary is looking to attack me, I don't have to worry. I can be comforted that my Lord is taking care of me. I can be comforted that he's provided for me everything that I need and that I'll be okay. There's been situations where I, I've, I've just been distressed. I've been worried. I've been concerned about certain things in my life. But the Holy Spirit has said, I've set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You have nothing to be worried about. Everything that you need, I have provided for you. And your enemy cannot touch you. And that's the mindset that every one of us that are in Christ needs to have. We fear no evil. For our Lord Jesus is with us. And he's prepared for us everything that we need to make it through where we are. And then this next part, which is amazing as well, he says... You have anointed my head with oil. See, back in those days, when the shepherd would move with the sheep, sometimes they get bruises, they get hurt, right? And what he would do is he would take, is he would take oil and he would anoint their head, he rub it into their head, kind of like a balm. Well, guess what? If you are in Christ, you have been sealed and anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit from the day you made your confession, right? So when we, when we're walking with our shepherd. The good shepherd. There may be times where we might get hurt. There may be times where we get bruised. There may be times where, you know, we go through some things. But one thing that he promised that he has anointed our head with oil, that we have, in fact, been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And the Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit protects us as well. The Holy Spirit is the comforter that Jesus said would come to us. And so we need to rely on him to do the role, the job that God has sent him to do and fulfill in our lives because he's our anointing. And then he says this, my cup overflows. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, God hasn't just provided for us today. He's provided for us for all eternity. My cup runneth over. Don't just look at what God has done for you today. Trust and believe through faith that whatever you need, God will supply. He said in the book of Matthew, he said, Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all these things. All everything else will be added unto you. Trust in God. He says your cup will overflow. Goodness and loving kindness will follow you all the days in your life. 
if you allow yourself to be led by the good shepherd. And he says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is not just looking to provide for you today. He's looking to provide for you for all eternity. If you will be obedient to him and follow him and allow him and his word and his good shepherd to be your guide. Y'all be blessed until next time. God bless.